Thank you for your interest in the LeapFrog BI platform. By registering, you've taken the first crucial step toward ETL automation. Now it's time to get your hands dirty. We've created this short video series to help you get started quickly. And the first thing we need to do is set up a project. In this Getting Started video series, we're going to guide you step by step through the process of taking data from a data source and loading a single dimension. In this first video, we're just going to get things set up. So to get started, navigate in your favorite browser to leapfrogbi.com, hover the platform menu item and select Login. Provide your credentials and you'll be redirected to your account's project list. Let me quickly orient you with the platform interface. Along the top, we have our menu items. Starting on the far left, you have history. This is where you can jump to any page that you've been to recently. Then you have the project area. This is where we are currently. You can select the project you want to work on, create new projects, or set project level settings. Then the next six items are actually components. Connection, stage, PSA, transform dimension, and fact. We'll be working primarily within these six areas throughout this Getting Started series. Then you have the Deploy menu item. This is where you'll queue a build and set deploy level settings, such as the precedence solution settings. Okay, so let's set up a project. When you sign up for an account, a default project is created for you. You can work within this default project if you like, or you can create a new project by clicking the New Project button. I'm going to work within the default project, but first I'm going to give it a friendly name and description. All right, now our project has a name. Let's go ahead and set the target system. The target system tells the project which version of SQL Server you'll, you will be deploying to. I'm going to deploy to SQL Server 2016. You can set this property to a value that's appropriate for your target environment. There are a number of other project level settings that we could define, but for now we're going to leave those all at their default values and jump over to our precedent settings. You can find the precedent settings under the deploy menu item by selecting precedence and then expanding the precedent settings pane. Before we jump into setting the precedence property values, let me quickly describe the precedence solution. The precedence solution controls the execution process for your entire project. What's actually going to happen is when we deploy, a number of SQL Server agent jobs will be generated. And those agent jobs will execute individual SSIS packages, again, that the platform will generate for you. What we need to do here in the precedence settings is define the job owner. I'm going to set the job owner to the SA account. However, you can set the job owner to an authorized uh, domain user or even a SQL user if you like. Okay, the next property we need to define is the deploy location. We're going to be deploying to the file system. So when we download our build, we're going to place the output in our target environment in the file system somewhere. If you already have a location that you'd like to deploy to, great. But if not, go ahead and go create that location and then put the directory path in the deploy location property you see here. Okay, we're going to stick with the default values for the rest of the settings for now. Let's go ahead and save the precedent settings. The next thing we're going to do is define a couple of connections by creating connection components. So let's go over to the connection menu item and select create new. As you can see, there's a number of different types of connections we can define. But before we jump into that, let me again quickly define what a connection component actually is. A connection component is the definition of a connection's properties. Leapfrog BI will never actually establish a connection. That only happens after you download your build, deploy it to your target environment, and begin the load process. Here, we're simply defining the properties of a connection. In this Getting Started series, we're going to be using an instance of SQL Server for both the source and the destination. But of course, whenever you go out to build your production environment, you'll be using a number of different sources. Since I'm using SQL Server, I'm going to go ahead and select the SQL Server native client connection type. 
Now I'm first going to create a connection that represents my data source. So I'm going to call this connection source and I'll just put some notes in the description. Now I'm going to jump down to the connection properties and set the connections server name and database. Now in my case, I'm deploying to a named instance of SQL Server. So my server name is going to be a server name slash instance name. If you're deploying to a default instance of SQL Server, then you'll just provide the server name. For the database name, go ahead and enter the name you see here. In the next video, you're going to be provided a script that's going to actually create this database for you. That's designed specifically for this getting started video series. Okay, that's it. Let's save our connection. Now we can do the exact same thing for our destination connection. This time I'll call the connection destination. And I'll again provide a server name and database name. Save the connection and we're done. Just like that, we have a couple of connection components to find. We've done everything we need to do now to begin the process of creating a data flow that loads a dimension. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video.